Hello, in this video we'll talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. Our goal here in the context of the class is to lay the groundwork we need to introduce quantum mechanics and the structure of the atom. But frankly, I think this is one of the most important things we tell you in this class. The electromagnetic spectrum and its applications are present everywhere in biology for example, determining the concentration of some protein in solution or kinetics of an enzyme reaction in medicine for all the imaging you ever do except ultrasound and in chemistry for, I mean we use this a lot when we do spectroscopy where we look at the either structure or properties or rates of a molecule or reaction, something like that. It's a really important thing to learn. Okay, and the simple starting point here is the property of a wave. So this slide has a wave drawn on it. The wavelength is the distance between identical points on successive waves. So example, from the top of one wave to the top of the next wave, or from the center crossing heading down to the next center crossing heading down, something like that. That's the wavelength. The amplitude is from the center line of the wave to the highest peak up here. That's the amplitude. Um, and then frequency is the number of waves that pass through a particular point in one second. Okay, so wavelength, the symbol here is a Greek letter lambda. And so the simple way I draw a lambda is just a line like this and then another line that comes out like that. Amplitude doesn't really have its own symbol. That's fine. Frequency, this looks like a V, but it's not. It's a Greek letter nu. And so when I write this, I tend to exaggerate the swoopiness of it so that in my notes, a nu like that is different than a v, or a u. So just make sure you do something when you write frequency to make it obvious that you're giving the symbol for frequency the Greek letter nu and not the letter v or something. Um, then units on here. Wavelength is given in meters, nanometers, millimeters, something like that, some distance. Amplitude is a trickier concept that we're not really concerned with at the moment, so we won't get into that. And then frequency, we usually express this in hertz, which is one cycle per second. As you're standing there, it's the rate at which the waves are coming at you, it's the number of cycles that come by in a second, where a cycle would be from here to here, oops, wrong button, from here to here to here, etc. Okay, if you want to know the speed of this wave, that is the wavelength times the frequency, and that gives you speed. Great. Okay, so that's properties of waves. Now, the previous slide, properties of waves, is true for any kind of wave. Pressure waves through air, which is sound, waves in an ocean, or electromagnetic radiation. Now, let's specifically talk about electromagnetic radiation, or EM for short. And in electromagnetic radiation, you have oscillating electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other that travel forward with time. So what this is trying to show is that the electric field is this wave here that's, say, up and down as you're looking at it now. And then the magnetic field is this wave here, which is coming in and out of the screen. It's a little hard to show in a 2D diagram, but we're doing the best we can, right? So your electromagnetic radiation has both an electric and a magnetic component. And for many applications, that's fine. You just use it as is. For some applications, you really try to emphasize one field over the other, depending on what you're doing. Okay, the speed of the radiation in a vacuum, say, is known as the speed of light. And it's a relatively big number. This is a really large number of meters in a second, so light moves very fast. Historically in science, people thought it was instantaneous for quite a long time until they were finally able to measure it. Okay, and then from the previous side, the wavelength times the frequency equals the speed of the wave. And so here, if the speed of the wave for electromagnetic radiation is the speed of light, then we have this very useful formula relating the speed of light, frequency, and wavelength. Now, we typically just use this number for the speed of light in a vacuum regardless of if it's in air or anything else like that, because the speed of light changes a little bit from vacuum to air, but not much, not enough that we really need to worry about it too much. Okay, so the interesting thing about electromagnetic radiation is that the wavelength or the frequency, 
determines how we experience this particular form of electromagnetic radiation. So for example, if you have wavelengths, and let me highlight this on this chart so it's a little hard to see, if you have wavelengths of 10 to the 12th nanometers, or you have frequency, and this is in hertz or inverse seconds, you have frequency of 10 to the 6 hertz, you're looking at radio waves. These are what we use, you know, you listen to the radio in your car, or your parents used to, something like that, right? Um, you know, and it's so much more than just the car radio you use. There's a lot of things that work on radio waves in different portions of the spectrum here. Um, and then if you increase the frequency a little bit, or decrease the wavelength, you're now looking at microwaves. You cook your food with about 1 gigahertz radiation. Um, the reason you do that is because at that frequency, the water molecules in food tend to rotate really well with the applied electromagnetic radiation, and thus it imparts motion into your food, and that heats it up. Okay, you go a little farther, you're into infrared. We tend to feel the heat from the sun as infrared. Um, you can also do various forms of science with infrared radiation. You know, your heat dish is going to put out some infrared too. That's why your heat dish looks kind of red, because the infrared bleeds into the visible spectrum over here. So the visible spectrum is what we see. If you expand this tiny little slice of the electromagnetic spectrum out, you see from 700 nanometers to 400 nanometers is the colors that we see. Red is 700, blue is 400. Um, this tiny little bit of the electromagnetic spectrum is our entire visual experience. All right. If you go to higher frequency or lower wavelength, you get to the ultraviolet range. And you've heard a lot about ultraviolet radiation, so I don't need to go into that too much. Okay, keep going, and then you get to x-rays. Well, x-rays have this useful quality of penetrating through human tissue, but not so much bones. And they'll penetrate through different types of tissue with different you know, levels of penetration, and so it works really well for medical imaging. Okay, keep going, you get to gamma rays. Gamma rays are emitted by nuclear reactions and big astrophysics events, and they're very high energy and very harmful. Okay, something I didn't mention before is down here it says increasing energy. So as you increase the frequency of light, or decrease the wavelength, you get higher and higher energy. So for example, right now your body's being penetrated with a whole host of radio waves and microwaves, your Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz, right? Then all these waves are passing through your body right now, no problem. All right, you get up to ultraviolet light, that's going to give you a sunburn. You get up to x-rays, well, the energy of x-ray radiation is now strong enough to start to ionize molecules in your body and affect molecules in your body in weird ways. So then exposure to x-ray radiation is a big concern because you don't want to injure someone by exposing them with too much radiation. So, and that's all due to the fact that the energy increases this way, as we'll talk about. Okay, some other things about electromagnetic radiation. Uh, we tend to use the word light in weird ways. Typically this refers to the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, but you can say UV light or infrared light. Sometimes people will say, oh, you shine the microwave light on it, but not usually, right? Usually light means ultraviolet through infrared, and particularly the visible spectrum. Now, something else that's interesting about electromagnetic radiation is, depending on the frequencies, you work with it different ways. All right, radio frequencies you can send through the air. You can also effectively send them through a cable. You can pretty easily transfer the electromagnetic radiation in air into electronic oscillations, or oscillations of the electrons in the cable, and then back out again. Whereas microwaves, it's pretty hard to send that through a cable. It doesn't work very well. It works better if you send it down a tube, actually, a metal square tube or circular tube. By the time you're infrared ultraviolet, well, you have to deal with this optically. Lasers and mirrors and it's light. You can't really send it through a cable because you can't translate the light into electrons moving and then back again. You can send it through a fiber optic cable, but that's effectively a piece of glass that the light is just transmitting through. And then you get to x-rays, and that's a whole different ballpark. You have to work with these in another completely different manner. So the different electronics you use to generate, transmit, receive all of these different forms of electromagnetic radiation become very different depending on the frequency. Me being an electronics guy, I find this really interesting. 
Okay, so that's our introduction to the electromagnetic spectrum. The other big thing we need to do here is talk about how to convert between frequency, wavelength, and energy. And converting between those things and energy we talk about in the next video. But converting between frequency and wavelength we can do now. So let's do it. All right. So the National Institute of Standards and Technology, I think that's what NIST stands for, they have a time signal radio station in Colorado that says this, the current time is da 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 boop. And so it's at a frequency, a pretty low frequency for a radio station. It's at 6.0 times 10 to the fourth hertz. All right, well, what wavelength is this frequency? So how would you do that? So, okay, here's the equations you have. This one is the one you typically have on the test, that lambda equals the speed of light divided by the frequency. Or maybe you'll have the other version. Who knows? It's pretty easy to convert from one to the other. All right. So you take this equation, lambda equals C over V, and you put the speed of light here, right, that's C. Oh, I said V, darn it. You put nu down here, which is the frequency, not V. Um, and then you do the math, right? And then you have two sig figs because you're given 6.0 times 10 to the fourth hertz. And then there you go. You get your wavelength in meters. Now, on a, again, on a test, you'll be given the formula, and you'll also be given the speed of light. So you don't have to worry about memorizing those things. Okay, so this brings up something very important about using your calculators. So grab your calculator, the one you're going to use on the tests, and try this the following different ways. So say you wanted to take 1 divide by 2 times 10 to the third. I mean, that's important because if you look at this slide before, you're dividing by 6 times 10 to the fourth. So we want to make sure we know how to divide by scientific notation in our calculators. Otherwise, we get ourselves into trouble. Okay, so 2 times 10 to the third is 2,000, so you can try 1 over 2,000. You can try just typing it in straight into your calculator, 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the third. And then try wrapping that in parentheses, 1 times 2 times 10 to the negative, or 10 to the third. So wrap that in some parentheses. And then the last thing to try is this EE button. And so I took a picture of a TI-83 and highlighted where the EE button is. You'll have to hit second and then the comma to get EE. And it's weird because on the calculator it says EE, -E, but then on your screen it'll just say E. And what this E is, is it's a shortcut for exponential notation. So you can, or scientific notation, same thing if you're base 10 exponentials. So you can say, all right, E really equals times 10 to the. It's not a mathematical equivalence, it's just a, what does this refer to? So if you say 2E3, it means 2 times 10 to the third. So try that, and then maybe pause the video while you give it a shot, or maybe you're doing it while I talk, and then see which ones give you the right answer. It should be point zero 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 five. All right, and so you'll find out that 1 over 2,000 works, gives you point oh 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 five, but maybe this is difficult to do on a regular basis because then you have to convert scientific notation into a real number, and that can be kind of a pain. But this works. All right. If you do 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the third, you'll notice this does not work. So what you're telling your calculator when you do this is you're saying 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the third. Sorry, my writing sucks, but I think you get the idea. So it takes 1 divided by 2, and then it does the next thing. It takes the outcome of that, and it multiplies it by 10 to the third. So it... That's not what you're trying to do. This, as written, puts the 10 to the third on the top, and you'll get some markedly different number. Okay, so don't do that. If you wrap it in parentheses, that's going to work just fine. Or you can use this E button, and that works just fine as well. I personally love the EE button because it is just really easy to use. You don't have to hit times 10 to the whatever, and um, the E functionality has the habit of gluing this 3 to the number in front of it. So you don't ever have to worry about wrapping the, this in parentheses. You don't need to do the parentheses. Just say 2e3 and it works. So I think pretty much any scientific calculator will have the e, even if it's not a graphing calculator. Um, and so I recommend using that, or at minimum, wrap your things in parentheses. And this little pop-up box gives you another example. To enter 1 times 10 to the negative 9th into your calculator, especially if it's in the denominator of an equation, you either put it in parentheses or use the E. 
Okay, so now that we've talked about that, let's do another example. So I'll put this up here. I'll encourage you to pause the video, try it, and then resume and we'll explain the answer. Okay, so if you have a laser and it's green, it's going to be in the ballpark of 545 nanometers of light that it puts out. Now, this actually hits us on why we need to know how to convert between frequency and wavelength. There's kind of a history of talking about some forms of the electromagnetic spectrum in different forms, right? So we typically talk about light almost exclusively in nanometers, visible light, I should say. Uh, but then we'll talk about radio waves, usually in frequency. You tune to 107.7 megahertz on your FM radio dial, right? And that's a frequency. So just different regions, we talk about it using different kind of terminology, but it's still the same physical phenomenon, and we can convert between frequency and wavelength. So it's something you need to know how to do. Okay, thus motivated. So what are we going to do here? Again, we'll take our equation and rearrange it. So we're solving for frequency, which is nu, and then that's equal to c over lambda. All right, so then you plug this in. Nu is equal to c over lambda. And then you got a problem, though, because, well, your c is in units of meters per seconds, but then your wavelength you're given is in nanometers. And so you need to make that match somehow. And so the easiest way to do that, I think, is to take this 545 nanometers and just convert it into meters. So nano is 10 to the negative ninth, and then remember, 10 to the negative ninth always goes with the base unit, meters. So, all right, 545 times 10 to the negative ninth divided by, you know, one nanometer to make the units work out. Now, that means in your denominator here, you're doing the unit conversion from nanometers to meters. You could do it separately. You could do it out here and then plug your answer in. That would be just fine. Okay, so now remember when you enter this in your calculator, you have to be very careful to wrap all of this denominator in parentheses. Okay, and you should get an answer of 5.5 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. You know, if you look at the units on this, meters cancels meters, your nanometers cancel, so you're left with just 1 over seconds. And then that's the same thing as saying 5.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So let me discuss this a little more. I was kind of a little lazy with how I laid my units out up here. But by saying meters per second, what this really means is meters, let me scratch this all out, is meters per seconds. So the seconds comes down to the denominator here. Um, and then in your denominator, if you make another division, what that really means is that this one nanometer comes up to the top. And then, okay, your nanometers and your nanometers cancel, your meters and your meters cancel, you're left with one over seconds. So I definitely recognize that it's a little tricky how we write all of these units in various compound ways. But anytime you write meters per second in a compound, or like a abbreviated form, it really means meters over seconds. All right, cool. So that's what we have for this video. So I'll leave you with this question. If you didn't know, we do have our college radio station, KSMC, and it's at 89.5 megahertz. For the pop-up question I'll put at the end of the video, what is the wavelength of this transmission in meters? And then per normal, you'll get an equation that relates wavelength to the speed of light with frequency and the speed of light value itself. Okay, thanks for watching and learning all about the electromagnetic spectrum.